Good afternoon. Welcome, bienvenue, and willkommen to our home at Mila. My name is Kelly Lamb. I'm the Vice President of Marketing. And as all of you are at your home, we want to bring you into our home now. In Mila Live, we want to cover off topics that you've shared with us that you want to learn more about, whether it's about products that you have in your home or about new products that you're interested in acquiring. Today, we've covered off various topics already, from how to get the best out of your Mila vacuum cleaner, how to actually take care of your clothes using Mila laundry systems, and later today, we're going to cover off some topics around cooking. Pour ceux d'entre vous qui ont demandé pour des sessions en français, on travaille actuellement d'avoir des sessions pour vous dans les semaines qui viennent. Meal Alive is completely interactive, and a lot of the content is driven around what you've asked of us. If you're watching on your YouTube account, be sure to log in onto your YouTube account. And any questions, you can ask by leaving a comment in the comment section. If you're watching us on MilaLive.ca, be, be sure to register with us and actually leave your questions in the comment section as well. Many of you have asked questions about the cooking technology of sous vide. And in the session today, we're going to cover off all the things you can use using the Mila vacuum sealing drawer, but also using that to do sous vide cooking in our Mila steam oven. So I'm really excited today to have our product expert, Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn. Good Hello. afternoon. Hello. Hello um, we're going to cover off the topic of not just sous vide, but actually utilities of the vacuum sealing drawer. Right. Um, and I know one of the first topics you're going to talk about is preservation of food, you know, especially in today's environment, as we really talk about sustainability, um, one thing is not about wasting food. Right. So I'm going to hand it off to you to start uh, and maybe introduce us to food preservation. Yes. Thank you, Kelly. Hello, everyone. So, you know, when I go grocery shopping um, and we're buying food and we don't want to have them spoil in the fridge because especially delicate foods like, for example, raspberries. Um, I don't know how many of you may have purchased raspberries and it will only last two or three days in the fridge sometimes. Um, and the fourth day, you're really then, um, it's actually starting to turn. So what I wanted to show you is that um, by using our vacuum sealing drawer, I can actually store my raspberries or any of my delicate fruits in um, our meal accessory bags that we have. And I'm gonna show you some different stages as to um, how we do this. So. I'm actually just going to put some raspberries in here because I'm thinking that I don't want to use these for a couple of days and I don't want to just have it sitting in the fridge where it may start spoiling. So um, I, when I put it in one of these bags, I, what I'm actually going to do is there are different uh, pressure levels that it actually, the, what ends up happening is that the air gets suctioned out of these bags and then it, it would actually, you can keep them in your fridge for a longer period of time. So let me just show you how this actually works right now as well. And I'm glad you're showing us raspberries because that, that's one fruit I find, we love to eat raspberries, but it's really frustrating. Yes. Because it'll mold pretty quickly, yep. unfortunately. Exactly. So I think this is a good way to keep them fresh for the week. Yes. Um, at least. Exactly. So before I do this, so. Many of you, uh, perhaps you see this drawer that's made underneath that's our DGC, our combi steam unit, and you may look at it and think it's a warming drawer because it could be a cup warming drawer, um, but it's actually our vacuum sealing drawer. So this is a new appliance that we've introduced, Marilyn, uh, in the last year. Yes. Um, and adding a, another option for customers. Exactly. So what I, you see right here is that when you turn on the unit, you'll see the different um, functions that you can do. So as I was mentioning to you, so there's different actual pressure levels. So the first one would be anything that's maybe delicate uh, fruits that you want to suction the air out, you're going to keep it for a longer period of time and you don't want it to bruise when the actual vacuum sealing is taking place. And then I have level two, uh, a little bit more and level three. And 
the next function on here is actually the sealing. So what you, this means is that the pressure that it's going to be using to seal the top of the bag right here. So it wants to actually seal the top of the bag here. And so you'll make your selection. And then there's a third selection here. And really this is also for like a third party maybe storage bag that you're using. So for Mila, uh, storage bags, vacuum bags that we're using, it would be the middle section that you would be selecting. And it's really very easy, as you notice, I just put the raspberries in here and I'm gonna lay it inside the drawer itself. And I've chosen uh, number one for my, um, the pressure level and I want to seal this. So I'm literally going to close this. And what ends up happening, you'll see that it's inflating the air into the bag itself. And then what will end up happening, it's gonna suction most of that air out there without actually crushing my raspberries, because that would be a shame to put that in there and then have it. But when it's turned off, you don't wanna open the lid here. You wanna wait till you hear that deflated. And then you wanna hear the beep. When you hear that beep, you're going to simply open this up and then you're going to have your raspberries that's in here. So what this means is that there are no air, there's no air that's getting inside this. So if I use it in a couple of days, two, three days, I know that my raspberries are still going to be great. And I just want to show you that I actually did this earlier in the week. Um, actually last week, because I, I was going to be using it for our demonstration today. So just to show you that how after a week, this is still not molded or anything. There's no air that's getting into here. So that would be, um, a, I put it on pressure level two for this because ideally when I want to do this, I may want to put this in the freezer. Mm -hmm. So if I'm putting it in the freezer, I want less movement in here. This is more movement inside because I'm going to use it in a couple of days. This is less movement because I may be wanting to freeze this. And then if I'm using actually the full uh, pressure on here, which would be pressure level three, you can see I've actually got this like a cool list that's happening. So if I wanted to have added some sugar that's in here, um, I can create this, just basically keep mashing it down a little bit and then cause a little slit on the bottom and then pour that over some ice cream or some pancakes that I may be preparing. So there's different um, pressures that we're using on here, and, but it can be used for any fruits that you're using or any vegetables as well. And as we go along, I'll show you as well some other um, foods that I'm preparing as well for us. So that would be preservation. And it's really what's good is about, it's preparing your food in advance and then putting it into the fridge and you've got it all set for the week and knowing that it's not going to go to waste, which is the big thing is what we want to have, make sure that food is fresh. So with that, um, I'm actually going to turn it to you, Kelly, just so you can talk a little bit more about what uh, we do with this, with the vacuum sealing bag. Yeah, so I think the vacuum sealing drawer, you know, even before we get into the topic of sous vide, which will be a large part of today, we want to be able to share with you other things that you can actually use it for. So Marilyn really shared um, food, uh, food preservation, which is very important to us, for, especially from a sustainability perspective. You know, we all uh, spend a lot on groceries um, and produce, and especially in today's environment where a lot of us are only going out once a week to do groceries, we want to make sure that things like raspberries um, that do tend to be a little more delicate in keeping, um, we want to make sure that it preserves longer. Um, on that note, um, I just want to answer a quick question. So Lily J, I think you've joined us in previous sessions before, so uh, welcome back for joining us. You had a quick question for Marilyn in regards to the raspberries. Um, do you pre-wash the raspberries before sealing or is it best to just wash before eating? That's a great question, and uh, it's best to wash them before eating because you don't want, when you um, clean the raspberry beforehand, you've got moisture now that's in there, and that's what you're trying to avoid. So after, when you're going to be using it, that's when you want to give it a quick rinse. Great. Thanks, Marilyn. Mm -hmm. So another, t another thing that we often use the vacuum sealing drawer for is if you want to quickly marinate something. Um, a lot of times, again, today's environment's slightly different. But normal times when we're all very busy, we're getting home, we need to quit, turn a quick marinade. We want to infuse flavors very quickly. So what we wanted to show you was a recipe that we do here. Um, and it's actually a very quick um, 
cucumber, Asian inspired cucumber salad. So I've also got a vacuum sealing bag here. So I've got some cucumbers that uh, I've peeled in some cases. Oops. Some I've gone ahead and left the skin on uh, just for contrast of texture. So I'm going to put some of that in here. Oops. We'll leave that one. That one got away. And then I'm going to add some garlic in here as well. Oops. Um, if you like chili, so I'm going to quickly actually just take a chili here. Let's take that. Put that into the bag. And then all I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a pinch of salt. Not too much because I'm going to add some other ingredients. So I have some sesame oil. We're just going to pour in there. I've got some rice wine vinegar. And I've got some soy sauce. It's a light soy. Uh, typically for salads, uh, we, we like to use a light soy for that. And that's really all we're going to do. Um, and then I'm actually going to ask Marilyn to go ahead and help me for a second and seal this off. So I'm going to leave that there. I'm going to ask Marilyn to seal that off. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at that later on in the session. We're going to let that marinate to the end. So it's going to be about 15 minutes. And you're going to see actually how it's not only infused the flavor, that's going to be hard to see, but you're going to see how the texture changes with the cucumber as well. So Marilyn, if you could do me a favor and seal that for me. Thank you. Smells good already. And again, what setting are you using in this case, Marilyn? Because there are some liquids uh, that we're using uh, for this. So I'm actually going to use a uh, pressure uh, three on here, but my, um, sorry, pressure two, but my suction will be pressure three. The so ceiling. The ceiling. The ceiling will sorry, be pressure ceiling three. Ceiling will be so pressure three. Okay. All right, let's do this. I like how you can see that, that the air has gone inside and then at the last minute it just Well, takes it, it, it takes all the air out and basically takes out. all the oxygen mm -hmm. out of yeah. it. And again, you can do this with different types of vegetables uh, as well, but it's really in some ways a quick marinade, uh, really to get flavors in there very, very quickly in a short period of time. You can use it for pickling, a very quick pickling. Um, there's different options, but we just want to share with you uh, here at Mila, what we do as far as a, a very quick um, Asian-inspired cucumber salad. Okay. Once again, we're just waiting for that beep. There's the beep. Oh, there it is. And now... Thanks, Marilyn. Oops. Sorry. I'm going to pass that back to you. Perfect. So, uh, you can see that right now. We're going to let that sit. We'll come back to that at the end. You're going to see actually how that has changed uh, quite a bit, the, uh, the pressure, the texture, and you'll see the flavors in the cucumber as well. Marilyn, I'm going to hand it uh, back to you because I think now we're going to do a couple of other things um, to show how sous vide cooking will be used. Right, exactly. Thank you. Okay, so I thought what I would do is um, just to show you some of the things that I do when I'm using a sous vide function. So when we have some vegetables, I've already vacuum sealed a few of them. So as you can see, this is my acorn squash and I vacuum sealed that into the bag. And basically once uh, this has gone in, I'm going to be putting it into the selection in here. So let me just turn this off. So what I would do here is just go right into the oven here. And if this is what I'm, I'm actually wanting to put under sous vide, I would go into operating mode, select my sous vide function. 
And I know that for acorn squash, when I've checked and doing a number of testings with it, is that this actually would go in at about 194 degrees. So I would want to just scroll to about 90, 195, or I could do it even at 190. So we'll, let's just choose 190. And I'm going to cook this for approximately one hour. And this is on a very low, um, it's a low temperature, but a consistent, sorry, it's a low temperature, but consistent setting so that this isn't going to, all right, right there, sorry. So then I'm going to press OK. And I'm literally going to um, put this into the oven and then leave it on for an hour. So that would be basically how I would set anything up that I'm going to put in to cook. And obviously, for the interest of time, uh, time we obviously have one going, which we'll show you the results right. of. So okay. while you get the next one yes. ready, Marilyn, yep. um, maybe we'll just talk a little bit about the, the idea of sous vide. So sous vide uh, in French really means under pressure, under pressure, which is really what we're doing with the, uh, with the food in the bag. Right. And traditionally, for those of you that know sous vide cooking, uh, it really is in a water bath mm -hmm. with an immersion circulator. And the importance of the immersion circulator is that it keeps water moving, which yes. is required for sous vide cooking. Um, and also, as you mentioned, part of sous vide is really cooking at a very low, s consistent temperature right. where there's actually a, a temperature variance of less than three degrees either way. Exactly. And, that's, and that's the tricky part for home cooks yes. to have done sous vide in the past because especially if you're cooking meats, yes. um, bacteria buildup can happen at those temperatures and that's why the combination of the slow movement mm -hmm. plus the temperature variance doesn't change. Exactly. Really what we're doing is now is we've been able to develop the program using our steam oven. The steam is in constant motion, so therefore replacing the need for the immersion circulator. Right. And steam in the cavity, in a uh, sealed cavity, yes. replacing water yes. and the movement of water. Exactly. So basically that's why it's really steam sous vide. We actually can mimic the exact same right. uh, qualities uh, or function of the immersion circulating water with the sous vide. Exactly. And I think one thing to note is for the home cook mm -hmm. is we're taking the guessing game out of the temperature variance because our with our meal of steam ovens we guarantee the temperature variance only within a one degree variance. Yes. So it's safe that way exactly. for home cooks to actually do it using our, our steam oven. Exactly. That's true. So I love the next dish you're going to do. Yes. Using sous vide favorite actually to make this. So um, for those of you that a lot of times you know we're, we're just planning as well our meal. What I like to do is I actually just take some potatoes. I've cut them and then I've just adding them into the bag. And sometimes you may just stop at this point but I'm not going to stop. I'm actually going to make turn this into mashed potatoes when I'm all done. So I'm just going to put in some salt because I would normally add salt into my mashed potatoes. I'm going to add some approximately this is about half a cup of cream and I mean I've made more into my bags before and then just some chilled butter that I'm adding in there because when I am again making mashed potatoes at home I literally am adding some butter or some cream or cream cheese to my potatoes so I'm just going to mix this a little bit now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually place this into the vacuum sealing drawer just want to make sure that I've removed moisture from there and I think it's important to note, you, you, you should really remove the moisture from the part that's being sealed yes. to make sure it gets a proper seal exactly. to the bag. Exactly. And then what I'm going to do is, literally, I'm just going to close this. And once this is completed, then I'm going to actually put it again under the sous vide uh, function on our steam oven or the combi steam oven. And I'm going to set this at about 190 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and I'm going to uh, set it for an hour and a half. And when this comes out, which um, as we had mentioned, we already have one that's um, going to be coming out soon, is that I, once this is completed, I just actually mash it right into the bag. I just cut the bottom of the bag and you'll see instant mashed potatoes that are coming out from there that I, we've made, Yeah. which is nice. So I just put it, I want to mention another point here as well. Um, when you're planning you know, a dinner or if you're just preparing this, you can actually, normally you'd have to soak the potatoes in because otherwise it turns back, uh, uh, brown a little bit on mm -hmm. here. But um, I can put this into the fridge for a couple of days and it's not going to actually turn brown. It just will actually... Well, because, you, we, because we've removed the oxygen yes, out of exactly. uh, the bag. And this is what it looks like. And I'm going to cook this now, just place it into the oven. Um, as I mentioned, at 190 degrees. Oh, I always do this. I'm sorry. And and I think it's so convenient, Marilyn, because reality is you could do a lot of the prep work beforehand. Um, yes. Leave it in the fridge, exactly. and whenever you're ready to use it, you can use it. Yes. Um, exactly. It's very um, packed in here, and no air that's coming through. Now yeah. you can make garlic mash yes. mashed potatoes too. Add some garlic in here. Add some. Any herbs that you would like to add, you can actually do that, which is really nice. Um, and then, as I mentioned, once it comes out, it's going to be hot, obviously, but I'm going to press sous vide. Again, I'm just going to press my temperature setting to 190 degrees, and I'm going to program this for an hour and a half. And press OK. And then once I press OK, I'm actually good to go. I'm just going to put this in the oven, and it's going to preheat, and then it will start the actual timer on here for us. So that's now um, another item that you can do using the sous vide function on here, which I love. And then the next one that I want to show you is making a steak, because there's a lot of people that always ask the questions about, Love to do a steak. How long does it take um, doing that in the sous vide? And I'm just going to explain that right now. So when we do a steak, I literally am just going to put gloves on here because I'm handling the meat. Yeah, and I think people really love using sous vide to cook steaks. One, yeah. um, because it will give them a consistent result yes. as far as medium rare, rare doneness based on the temperature setting that they end up choosing to do. So I think that's one reason why. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing is you could do multiple steaks, yes. not worry about it. And if, if you imagine a dinner party, again, um, where you have guests and it's not something you have to watch, you can actually have set that in there earlier in the day. Yes. Let it slowly go through the process of cooking through sous vide. And when you're ready to serve, flash fry it, yes. which we're going to show in a minute. Exactly. Um, and you're ready to go yes. with dinner. So right now, I've just put my like, spit in the bag. I've just put some thyme that's in here. Um, I don't like to salt it before for me personally, but uh, I know some people might want to, but I just turn this on. I'm going to put pressure um, level three. And then again, for the ceiling, I'm going to choose a number three on here. So I'm just going to put this in. Lay that in here, close it, and I'm just going to wash my hands really quickly on that. But once this comes out, um, again, it's going to be all suctioned, and then we just place it in the oven. So, um, but that's one of the things, especially when you mentioned about a dinner party, you know, preparing them in advance. Um, because with sous vide cooking, it holds that temperature, so you have a variance, especially with this, what I'm doing for the steak, um, cooking it for an hour. But I have up to three hours that I could leave it in there. Mm -hmm. So I could set the timer for three hours or two and a half hours. And then when I know I want to take it out, I'm ready. I'm going to fry it and right. I'm set to go. Well, and that's why in reality, a lot of the professional chefs also use sous vide cooking in a restaurant because yes. it, it allows a lot of flexibility. So if you're talking about, for example, uh, a lobster tail, a yes. poached lobster tail and how delicate timing wise is, that's the beauty of sous-viding uh, lobster tail, yes. um, is 
you can actually let it go in the sous vide. It can sit actually for a long time. Right. And for a restaurant, they can actually pull it out of an immersion circulator, which typically gets mm -hmm. used, open the bag, finish it, poaching in some butter, and they're ready to go. That's right. And it makes their process a lot easier. Yes. So for, the, for us at home, it provides just that ability to enjoy our guests, do a lot of the prep work the night before, and yeah. you know, let it cook earlier in the day. Right. And this is what it looks like. But also imagine like if you're marinating this, like you can put this in, put it in the marinade, you can put it in the freezer. Right. Anytime that you uh, want to have some steaks, you take it out and it's being tenderized from the marinade inside, but it's set to go. Absolutely. All right. So that's my portion right now on showing you the different um, foods that you can vacuum steel, seal and use it for um, sous vide cooking or for storage. And uh, I think Kelly, um, on your side, you're going to actually grill our steaks I, right now. Well, I'm going to sear the I'll steaks. Sear the steaks, yeah. that's right. I'm going to sear the steaks. Okay. Um, so I have one of the steaks that uh, we had done earlier. So this was exactly what Marilyn had talked about. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, cut open the bag. So first thing I'm going to do, as many of you know, um, you really need the pan searing hot uh, for uh, searing a steak. And I really just want to sear it because it's really cooked. So the one thing we didn't talk about earlier is with something like steaks, you actually have two options. You can actually sear it first and then sous vide it, um, or you can actually sous vide it and sear it. So in our particular case, we actually did the sous vide process first and we're gonna finish it off by searing it. But again, you can do it either way. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get uh, my pan very hot. Now, I'm actually using an induction cooktop. Um, we get a lot of questions and we're gonna be doing an upcoming session on induction specifically around searing at high temperatures. Um, but I have a cast iron pan here. Um, I personally like to sear on cast iron. And you're gonna see realities how quickly this is gonna heat up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. I'm gonna turn it on high. Now, I'm a little lazy for cleaning. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a paper towel right down on the induction surface, oops, to make my cleaning process a little bit easier so I don't need to worry about any oil splashing. So that's heating up. I'm gonna turn it on high and then I'm gonna cut the steak now. So I'm just gonna open the bag. Just gonna remove some of the thyme here that was in there. So now I want that hard sear color so I'm just gonna dry off the meat, you want to make sure when searing, you get everything nice and dry. That, quickly wash my hands. So, very, very simple. I'm going to salt. Sorry, I'm going to pepper it. I'm going to salt it now. I'm going to create a crust on that. Now, one thing I like to do, so I don't oil the pan. I actually oil the steak off the pan. I'm going to really rub that in there. I've added some extra pepper at the bottom there. Salt the other side, create a nice crust. So I want to make sure my pan is very hot. You want, and one other thing, uh, I don't know if you can actually hear, but the ventilation hood actually went up because it's sensing the temperature of the cooktop going up. So this is connectivity 2.0 that we offer between Miele induction cooktops and our ventilation hoods. So the hood will automatically know to adjust the power based on the heat that's actually coming out. So again, I'm just going to quickly wash my hands while the pan heats up. And so again, we want a very, very hot pan and all I need to do is really sear it. It's not gonna be anything more than that. 
So the pan is hot. I'm going to go ahead and actually sear. You hear that sizzle, which is great. Put that aside. Here. And it really, really won't take very long for this to quickly sear off. Again, with induction, the beauty is using induction technology, if you haven't watched one of our sessions before, that's allowing me to actually cook on a paper towel without burning that towel at all because the heat is through the magnetic waves between the actual cooking surface being the cast iron and the cooking surface. If I take this off, there's actually no more heat. There is residual heat from the pan. But again, you can see how quickly this is searing off. And I'm just going to let that finish searing off at this point in time. Um, and I'm going to pass it back to Marilyn to show you the results of the mashed potatoes, the acorn squash, as well as the corn on the cob. Thank you, Kelly. So what I want to show is actually, um, so the sous vide has been completed for my mashed potatoes that I put in there and um, for the acorn squash, as well as for the corn on the cob. So I'm just going to remove these right now. Remember, this was the potatoes and how they went in. And then this is how they're actually coming out. And I also have, I'm just going to remove my squash as well as the corn on the cob. And I'm going to show each one of you, everybody, how this works. So the fun part about the potatoes is that it's cooked completely. And instead of me putting it into another bowl, into a blender to mix it all up, I'm literally just mashing it down. So I'm just, it is hot. So I want to get all that butter and that cream on the inside that I've put in there. I want to mix that really well together. This is great if you have kids at home, Kelly. This would really be good because yeah, it's fun. Actually, it's fun for the kids yeah, to actually. It, they they would love doing that part about exactly. it. Exactly. Just have to just uh, put a dishcloth over it like I'm doing, and it's fine. They're not going to get burnt or anything. But I'm just literally, I'm feeling if there are any lumps in here right now. And now I, what I'm going to do is, because I can feel I've actually, I've got everything. It's all mashed completely. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull back one of the edges over here. I'm just going to bring this together from the top. I'm going to cut this off right down here. What I want to do now, I'm going to actually just let this go right inside. Can you see how smooth this is? The potatoes are smooth and it's all mixed together with the cream and the butter that's in there. Like, how simple is that? That's amazing. That's it. Let me just put this And again, aside. I think the convenience of not having to sit over a stove, yes. watching the potatoes boil, Strain the potatoes, yep. add the cream, bring the cream or milk up to a boil. Yep. Um, it really is almost like a pom puree. Yes. Uh, it's so fine. Exactly. And it's just, it's nicely, like with mixing the right consistency in there, it's just ideal. It's all, now this is ready. You're ready to go with this. So that's the potatoes. And then what I wanted to show you is the squash is also ready to go. Oh, sorry, excuse me. 
<laughs> what was I thinking of? I'm so excited right now. <laughs> this is the one I want to cut right now. And again, it has to be cut close to an area that the air is getting to that. So there you go. And I could have put butter on here if I wanted to on the inside, some um, brown sugar yeah. as well. But what I love about that, Marilyn, the yes. squash is a great example where, um, you know, it really is fork tender. Yes, um, yes. But it actually holds its shape yes. completely. So right? this is it. It's all ready to go. And how I, easy, but I it actually holds its, it. holds its shape beautifully, mm -hmm. um, which is exactly. great. Exactly. And then the final one that I, we prepared was the corn on the cob. So I'm going to just move this over. Just remember now with corn on the cob as well, whether you boil it, um, usually on the edges, it will be a little bit brown. Or so when you're sous vide, basically the edge as well might be a little discoloring. So you just have to take a knife, cut this off, and see how easy that was to cut off right. on there. So now you've also got the corn and it's just done perfectly to your liking. So that is basically showing you how easy to prepare. That could be a complete meal actually when I look at this right now with the steak, um, the potatoes, the squash and the corn. That all together. We have a complete meal. Great. So I'm going to finish off, Marilyn. I, I, the steak is done. Again, we were just doing a very, very yes. uh, quick sear on the steak because really the steak was cooked uh, using the sous vide method. But I'll cut that open to show you the cook uh, on the inside. But before I do that, I also want to quickly show you the results of the uh, quick marinade we did yes. for the cucumber salad. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm actually going to take that. Cut the bag open there. And so again, this has really just been marinating for the time that, uh, from the beginning of the show, when we actually did this, so to quickly show you. But what I wanted to show you is, so here's one that actually has just been sitting, not even marinating. Just a bit of the difference and you can actually see. So it's almost become, it's taken on a new form with a compressed cucumber salad. All the flavors have infused into the cucumbers versus what you can see in uh, another version that we had just done without doing the compression. Right. So it not only changes the flavor profile, it really injects the flavor in a short time. It was maybe 10, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. um, but it also changes the texture of it. Yeah, it looks delicious, actually. I can smell that from here. So very lastly, I'm going to uh, cut the steak. So I'm going to take that. And I'm just going to cut the steak right in the middle. And again, what you can see with the steak um, is really edge to edge. Um, it's a consistency of the cook right edge to edge. I would say this is uh, a medium. You can do medium rare, rare. Um, but really, again, this is very much edge to edge. This could have been sitting in there for another hour if I was doing yes. a dinner party, yep. Marilyn. Exactly. Um, and then we would pull it out and sear it off. Yes. Again, the other option for those, you can sear it ahead of time, sous vide it, and it can come right out of the bag and actually be served. Exactly. So just your preference on, on uh, how you want to serve the steak itself. Right. So. Yeah. It looks um, great, actually. So again, hopefully we've uh, shown you some introduction to our new vacuum sealing drawer, how it works to, for food preservation, for marinating, quick mm -hmm. marinating, um, but also using the functionality of sous vide in our steam ovens. Um, Marilyn, we are running way over time tonight, <laughs> um, right. as we normally do yes, with these true. cooking segments, but maybe we can try to take a couple of uh, questions. Um, we won't be able to answer everybody, unfortunately, tight, um, but we will for sure uh, get back to you via the comment section or via email if you've registered uh, with us to be able to answer the questions. So you sure. ready for some questions? Yes, All right, absolutely. Let's take some questions. Um, 
So if we only have, so Deb, I know Deb is our, uh, Deb has joined us on many yes. previous sessions. So uh, hi Deb, back. welcome back. If we only have the steam oven, um, but don't have the actual sous vide bag sealer, can we use a sealed a freezer bag with the air removed as much as possible? Um, so the first thing to note is you really do need to use a food safe bag yes. for cooking. Exactly. So a typical freezer bag will not work. You definitely don't need to use the Miele bags. That's ones that we obviously offer as part of a complete solution for our customers. Mm -hmm. But that's not the one you definitely need to use. You just need to make sure that you are using a, uh, food, safe. a food safe bag for the purposes of cooking, which yes. you can get from various places. Um, so that's important, Deb, uh, to note. But yes, you could arguably use a different brand of sous vide or, or food safe cooking bags at that. Um, so uh, Sue, uh, Sue, I think is a first time uh, viewer with us. Welcome, welcome Sue, Sue, and welcome to Mila Live. Um, Sue has a question, how long was the corn done? I actually cooked the corn for 30 to um, 35 minutes. It really depends on the doneness that you like your corn as well. Because um, depending on the, if I put it in for a longer period of time, I would find that um, it would actually cook a little bit more. But if you like to have that little bite on there, 30, 35 minutes is ideal. And, and again, Sue, the great thing about sous vide reality is the benefit of it is you actually can leave it in there yeah. for longer. Yes. Um, and really, you're not going to see a huge difference. No. Um, yes, if you leave it in for hours after, for sure. But even for, uh, for up to an hour after yeah. the, the desired cooking time, that's the beauty about sous vide cooking. It really can stay right. in there. And I should have corrected on that because I was saying that depending on the time that you put it. So the higher the temperature is, right. you know, that's when if you're putting it in for 30 minutes, that it would be a little bit more done. But when I set it in there, it was about 185 um, degrees, and then I cooked it for 30 minutes. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so Bayan Motahed, uh, hi Bayan, welcome uh, to Mila Live with us. Um, you had a question about what's the best way to render the fat on the steak? I find my steaks with undercooked fat, and then the steak itself is a little cool to eat. I'm not sure sous vide will uh, help render fat. Um, really, what one thing that the sous vide will do with this low, slow cooking process, it will break down the fat itself. Yes. So that when you're doing the final sear, as we did here, you'll find that um, because the fat is actually broken down in the slow cooking process, mm -hmm. um, it will release much quicker in the searing process of things. Um, so I'm not sure that's exactly answering the question you have, but you will find with sous vide cooking, the fat itself will break down. Yes. Um, and again, when you sear it, it will uh, cook out much, much quicker. Um, and the purpose of doing the searing is just a very, very flash searing to get a crust on the outside right. of the cooking yeah. process. Uh, maybe Marilyn, one more question yes. uh, before we have to sign off. And again, for those that we aren't, uh, haven't been able to get to, we will for sure um, reach out to you via the comment section or via email to answer your questions. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's see, Lily, uh, Lily has a question. I think Lily is also uh, a repeat viewer with us. How far ahead can you sous vide something and hold it in the uh, sous vide combi oven steam or yeah. combi steam oven, sous vide before serving? That's a, a great question and that's what sous vide cooking is really all about. So for instance, let's just use a steak for example. Mm -hmm. um, I'm making a medium rare steak and I can set it for to hold in there up to three hours. So if I want to take it out after an hour and a half, two hours, that's fine. But I can still hold it in there. I can set the timing for three hours because I know my guests or company's not coming or I'm not ready for dinner myself. And then when I take it out um, before the th by three hours, I can then sear it and I'm good to go. Yeah. And things like mashed potatoes, yes. um, yeah. that could really hold yes. uh, quite a long yes. time. Um, and similar with the squash yep. and, and the corn. Again, um, we can send you some information, uh, Lily, on that if you're interested, but really um, what Marilyn said is absolutely accurate in regards to holding mm -hmm. even steaks for a long, long time. Yeah, exactly. Um, for one very last question again before we sign off. 
Uh, Lisa, Lisa Drummond has a question for us. What if I need to make some steaks rare and others medium rare? Um, so really, yeah, that one you really can't necessarily, um, Lisa, do at the same time, unfortunately. Right. So in this particular case, you will actually have to because those two will cook uh, for different right. times, Marilyn, or yes. te uh, actually the temperature the, will also change as well. The temperature is what changes. And I think that's yes. the challenge. Because for steak, rare is about 125 to 129. And now if you want it medium, that's approximately about 135 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, you wouldn't be able to put them in together. It'd have to be done separate times. Yeah, and in this particular case, it's not like if you want the medium rare, you leave it in for a longer period of time. Unfortunately, the yeah. way sous vide cooks it's really a lot on the internal temperature yes. um, you really can't cook them at the same time unfortunately so Absolutely. we wish we had a different answer for you but that's uh, unfortunately that's the way it needs to cook mm -hmm. so thanks Marilyn for uh, more cooking now I know yes. uh, you and I will be back together on Friday this we time will be, yes. this time at 12 p.m. yes and we've put the challenge out to all of you watching on Facebook and Twitter as all of you are at home as the kids are at home we know uh, home lunches now obviously are a thing. Yes. So I know you and I have put the challenge out there to our viewers to uh, share what is your favorite home lunch. And we're going to try to put a bit of a healthy twist or a different twist in different, some cases yes, exactly. on those lunches on uh, Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern time. You'll be able to uh, cook with us and also hopefully enjoy lunch after that. So um, yeah, it'll be exciting actually. Yeah, it'll be really exciting to uh, have you back uh, for that. Um, one last thing we want to share with you for those viewers that are out there right now, um, the Mila shop. So Mila.ca is open 24 seven and many of you have had questions for us on maintenance of the products. So we want to be able to share with you uh, a promotion we have just for you for the next hour up until 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. We've run a little bit late, uh, so make sure if you're interested in that. The promotion code for that is STEAM10. So if you go on and you look at any of our care products from our uh, oven cleaners to our DGC Clean, our descaling tabs, which you need for coffee machines and our steam oven combination, steam ovens, if you go on right now, uh, there's an additional 10% savings. So right now there's a 10% promotion. You would get, uh, as loyal viewers to us, an additional 10% savings um, if you use the promo code STEAM10 upon checkout. So be sure to take advantage of that as well. So we want to thank you for joining us. Um, we want to thank you for joining Mila Live. We will have uh, sessions on this upcoming Friday. Um, we will continue into next week. Many of you have questions is how do you buy meal appliances right now given this, the current situation we're in? So first of all, I really do want to thank our retail partners um, who have invited their customers to join Meal Alive. So out in the west coast of Canada right now, we have our partners at Baker's Appliances, Avenue Appliances, Jerome Appliances, Midland Appliances, and of course our partners at Trail Appliances who have invited their customers to join us on Mila Live in Ontario. We have Tasco Appliances, Goman's Appliances, as well as Appliance Canada. Thank all of you for having your customers join us here on Mila Live. Hopefully we've been able to answer questions for them. And in the east we have Creative Appliances who've uh, asked their customers to join us. Some of our retailer partners are continuously to remain open. Uh, they also have their online shops. Be sure to visit Mila.ca and our retail locator to find out which of our retail partners are open. In addition to that, we have Mila.ca. We've also launched a new service for you, our customers that are interested in buying appliances with our personal sales consultation appointments that are available they're available on mealalive.ca and you have two choices. You can do these via telephone or you can actually do these via a virtual consultation one-on-one -on -one with one of our sales consultation experts. You'll be able to see them. They'll be able to see you. They'll be standing in front of the appliance that you're interested in purchasing to be able to answer very specific questions uh, to you. So be sure to go ahead and 
Um, visit MilaLive.ca, book an appointment. The first appointments are available starting tomorrow. Um, so take advantage of that. Very, very lastly, uh, we, on behalf of Marilyn, myself, the entire team at Mila, we want to send our biggest thanks to all those frontline essential workers that are out there right now servicing the, the various Canadian communities across the country, providing the medical services where people need medical attention, the food services from grocery stores to food delivery to restaurants that are uh, allowing for food deliveries to happen, public transportation, all of that. We really want to send our sincere thank you to all of you, uh, your bravery. Uh, we want you to remain safe, but again, our sincere thank you. Be sure to continue to watch Meal Alive. Turn your subscription on on your YouTube channel to get the latest from us. Uh, when new videos are posted, when we're live with mealalive.ca, stay home with your families, be safe, use the time wisely, cook, um, spend the time together, enjoy, uh, and we look forward to having you on our next session of Meal Alive. Have a great evening across the country. Thank you once again.